Hi, I'm Rick Kaufman, technical marketing engineer for the technical enablement team here at Aruba Networks. Now, this is episode six of the Aruba RESTful Automation Series. In this episode, we're going to dive into Jinja 2. Now, look, you can write a Python application and make it do all kinds of things, but the UI or the user interface might be um, not what you desire right? Uh, not everybody wants to work from a command line. So we may have to introduce some form of a web user interface or a GUI interface, a graphical user interface. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this stuff called Jinja 2 that will build these templates that we can load with variables and do some conditional logic inside the template itself to build charts and tables for us. So Jinja 2 is going to make your applications super pop when people start using them, and they will actually think that you are a full stack web developer. You're on your way. So stick with me and let's get started. We're gonna keep doing what we've been doing using Flask applications in Docker and Docker Desktop for the examples. We'll go through one in the lab. I'll show you how to get there. So Jinja 2 templates. They are just HTML files that we can nest. And basically by having multiple HTML files, we can nest them all together so they appear as one. But we can get very modular in the way we can swap information out. So um, here is the documentation page. I've never been there, but I'm going to try to share with you all the stuff you need to know to get going. And this is as simple as Jinja 2 gets. So you have a base HTML, you have in the body, a block content and in block. And where that is, because now that's not your normal HTML there. HTML is pointing things on the end. These have percent curly braces. So that's the Jinja 2 part. We'll split that open and we'll take the bottom thing, page HTML, and we'll put it in there. So page HTML says we're extending the base HTML image. And here is the block content for it. And everything be in our block content and in block gets put into the base block content and in block. Simple, right? Okay, you got to kind of see it in action here. So here is our base HTML that we'll be using. We have a head with some metadata, but you can see down there at the bottom, there is our block content and in block. And that's where this page, because it starts with base HTML, is going to be put in there. Now we're going to take all of this table information and put it in the base HTML between the block and end block. Super cool, huh? But in this, we're just building a table here, a very simple table with the table headings here at the top, name, age, height, air. And then we're going to put them down here in these table rows. So you can see here, I might have more than one row. So I'm saying I'm passing a list of lists. So when I get that, I get to the very first one by saying this for loop here. So for person and data, I'm going to take person and the index of the list and put them right there. This will look a little bit different for dictionaries and we'll cover that as well. Okay, here is the people text we're going to use. It's just a text file. And here is the people to text. We're going to take these lines, bring them in, process them, and put them in an HTML table. For this demo, I've set up some code that we're gonna download from GitHub. So this will be the link that we use, and I'll show that to you in the actual demo, but this will make it easier for you to follow along. So let's get started. I'm gonna use the Git client to clone a repo from GitHub. Okay, if we're gonna be developers, this is where we keep all of our stuff out on GitHub. So there's GitLab, GitHub. I have an account on GitHub. I am XOD442. And if you go to this URL, you will see a readme that tells you how to get get and get it running. Sorry for that. So we're going to use get clone, run this command, and pull down the repo from GitHub. Okay, you can see it downloading. We need to change directory to that repo so we can see what's going on. I'm going to clear the screen and we're going to list the files. Okay. 
And just by looking at these files, I have a Docker file and a Docker Compose. I know this is going to be a Docker application. I'm going to run it in Docker infrastructure, and we'll show you how to do that here in just a second. Now, I want to take you on a tour of some of these files. So let's go find our directory and open it up in our editor. Now, this is a Flask app, and we have Jinja2 templates. We have to have a directory called templates to keep our Jinja2 templates in. And if we look at them, um, we, here we said we were going to have a base. And in our, in our base was just the basic parts of the document, right? I have head, I have body, but in my body is where I have the block content. And this is where we'll insert any page that says extends base HTML in the top of it. So this defines the block content that goes into that space. Here we're looking at a table. This is HTML, Hypertech Markup Language. And what we're doing with this is we're defining a table. And you can see I have the table headers here. And then down below, this stuff in the middle here is not HTML. It doesn't have pointy things on it, right? So this is where we're using Jinja2 to say, I'm going to get a variable called data. It's a list of lists. So I'm going to go through and read each internal list one at a time. I'm going to iterate through them. And as I do, I will take the index of each list and put it in this table data below. And then when I'm finished reading the file, I need to have an N4. So I'm starting it with a four person in data and using N4 to stop the loop processing. This is in my HTML file. This is really good news. So we're going to make a file here that's going to, our table rather, and that's it. And then I'm going to take the message because I'm sending message and data, and I'm going to take the message and put it in these mustache braces, right? The double curly braces. If I have that syntax, whatever I put in the middle is a variable that gets passed from the application. So I can put messages in my HTML file, okay? And we're going to see how this works. So uh, I also have another home one here. So we said um, extends base. So this is the exact as the other one. I have my table, my headers here. But this time, for a person in data, data is a list of Python dictionaries. And I'm going to use those dictionary keys to plug in to the table data space. And so I'm saying for a person in data, I have to have N4. Okay, and then down with the message is down at the bottom, right? So that's all good. Let's take a quick look at the files we're going to pull in. People text, we're just going to read this file, make a bunch of lists. This one, we're going to read this file and make a bunch of Python dictionaries. And this is the app that's going to do it. So we said, uh, let me blow this up a little more so we can get an idea here what's going on. Um, we said that we would have a Flask app. So we're going to have Flask. And then we're going to have our default route here, the slash. And that's going to call this function people. And we're going to set up a list, an empty list, and we're going to call it data. We're going to open that text file, read the lines, clean them up. And then we're going to use this Python list to take that string and give us list elements back. And we're going to take that list in person, and we're just going to put it in the blank data list. And we're going to iterate through in a loop, for loop. And when we read all the lines, we'll have all those lists inside the list data. And we'll pass data and message to home HTML using render template from Flask. This is why I use Flask, because I can use Jinja2 templates now. And then we'll call that home and pass it the message and the list of lists called data. Okay, so that's if I go to slash. If I go to slash p2, I'll do the same thing. But this time I'm dealing with Python dictionaries because I'm using JSON loads and um, what I have here, the string person, creating a Python dictionary and appending it to data, sending the message and the data to home one. That's all this really does. Okay, so look, let's get it running. To get it running, 
we simply have to come back to the directory and type docker dash compose up dash d runs it in the background and it comes up tells us okay and all we have to do is get a web browser now and go ahead and open up to that location now really quick how do we know what port number well we can go to the docker dashboard in docker desktop and we can find our container that's running our application and then we can look down here and we'll say 5004 so localhost 5004 we're going to go ahead and look at that localhost 5004 gotcha and we get a list of people generated with python lists and we said if we go to p2 so we'll go to slash p2 and we get a list of that was generated by dictionaries so this is the other html page we're inserting it into the base url using jinja2 for loops in our html pages to make html tables why am i showing you this because instead of reading from a text file you could be reading information coming in from an api request both of them the same way we're going to have to handle it process it and then present that information in a screen or be able to write it to a file but we want to see the results of that we're going to put it on the screen so this is a really handy piece of code to get you started in doing just that now if we don't like the way this looks this is html pure and simple nothing special and i'm not using what we call cascading style sheets that's what brings the zing to html so if you use them and i'll probably have a whole other video on this later on hacking css you can make your applications look like this you can see how i said we're going to go layer by layer and we're going to start small and get a little more complex as we go now we're getting to the point where we have our flask application and we're adding some web pages to it so we can have some visualization of the data now i want you to stay curious my friends because we're going to start getting deeper and deeper into this and i want you to join me in the next episode of the aruba restful automation series episode seven where we're going to talk about python the environment we're working in and a little bit about docker so we know how to replicate our application on other Docker machines. Okay, so stay tuned, stay with us. And as always, here's some links for you to go out and look at. And then if you're into continued learning, here's a few really great places where you can advance your knowledge. Thank you for watching. See you in the next episode.